This is the first tutorial in a series of tutorials I'm going to create on web game programming. We're going to start with Adobe Flash and we're going to work with ActionScript 2, we're going to work with ActionScript 3, and then hopefully we'll move on to some newer technologies like HTML5 and maybe even Python for creating games. When you first launch Flash, this is the type of screen that you will see. You can see that this in this launch screen, you have choices here. You can open up your recently used files, or you can create new file. Now, in my classes, what we're going to be doing is mostly creating new files and opening our recent files, and we're going to be working with ActionScript 3. So if I click this, it'll open up a new Flash file, and it'll have the ActionScript language set to 3.0 by default. If I click here, it'll open up a new Flash file, and the ActionScript language will be set to 2.0 by default. Now, this is just a nice, quick way of jumping right into a Flash file that you're going to use. You can see there's some other options for Adobe Air, and Air for Android, and Air for iOS, and all these other types of things that you can do, right? There's even the Learn Flash files over here. But we're, what we're going to do is mainly use ActionScript 2 to start with, and then we're also going to use some ActionScript 3. So I'll click ActionScript 2, and once you have your file open, you should have the ActionScript language set to 2.0. If you want to double check that or change it to 3.0, all you have to do is go to File, Publish Settings, and you can see here that you can click on these different areas and highlight what it is that you want to access or publish. In other words, if I'm going to publish a Flash movie, I have this check marked right here. If I want to publish an HTML file to go with my Flash movie so that the Flash movie is embedded into the HTML file, then I'm going to need this too. There's some other options here, GIF, JPEG, PNG file, and Win projector and a Mac projector. But we're going to be using HTML and Flash Swift movies mostly. So I'll select the Flash Swift movie, and you can see here that the Flash player is at 11.2, and the ActionScript language is set to 2.0. You can see that I can change it to ActionScript 1, 2, or 3 by just using this drop-down menu. So ActionScript 2 is the language, and this is fine. I'm going to just click OK. And so we know that the ActionScript language is set to 2.0. Now let's talk about the interface. You can customize the Flash interface for the type of developer that you want to be. So for instance, if you go to Window, and you go all the way down here to Workspace, you can optimize the workspace if you're an animator, if you're a designer, or if you're a developer, or you can use classic mode. Now, I like to use classic, the classic workspace, because it reminds me of earlier versions of Flash that I was used to working in. So I have it set to classic mode. And just to give you a rough overview, on the left, this is the toolbar. In the center here, this is what I like to call the stage, right? This is where you'll be creating your animations. This is the animation size right here. You can see over here in the property window on the right hand side, this is the properties window. And these are extra panels that you can open and close. And the properties of the document is set to 550 by 400 pixels, right? So if I wanted to change that, and let's say change it to 650, right? And then just hit enter, you can see that the stage is now wider, right? So you can also change the stage color here. I'll change it to gray. You can see now it's gray or dark gray. OK, so this is the interface. We've got the toolbar on the left, the stage in the center. We've got our timeline up here at the top, and our properties windows and our panels on the right-hand side. We also have these pull-down menus up here at the top. Now, our code, our action script, will go in a special window that I'll talk about in a second. Now, a little bit more about these panels. These panels move around. So if by accident you open up and grab a panel like the timeline, and by accidentally, and accidentally you close it, you can see you've got no more timeline. And that's frustrating to some people. Also, you could open up some of these panels, detach them, and likewise you could um, close them, and now you can't see them. All you have to do is go to Window and activate them here, or just hit Workspace and then Reset Classic, 
and that will reset the classic works, workspace to the default layout. So first of all, I recommend working in the classic workspace, and if you need to reset it, just go to Window, Workspace, Reset. Now, for coding in Flash, you're going to use your Actions window. Now for that, you go to Window, and you go down to Actions, or you can hit F9 on the keyboard, and it'll open up your Actions panel. Now, I like to keep my Actions panel detached, meaning it's kind of uh, floating around, right? So I like to keep it floating around, and when I need it, I just basically collapse it by double-clicking on the gray bar. You can open and close it, or you can just press this button to open and close it. And so that's the way I like to use my Actions panel. So I can move it over here while I'm not using it, and then when I'm ready to use it, I can click and open it. You can also, if you want, with this Actions panel, drop it right into one of these different areas on the screen, and it'll fit right into the interface. So once again, the Actions panel is where you're going to be doing your action script coding, your scripting.